discussion when we had uh, discussed the various methods of irrigation we had uh, discussed in brief what do we mean by what we understand by the sprinkler irrigation system but we had not gone beyond that we had not looked into what are the various types of sprinkler irrigation systems today we'll start first with what are the various types of sprinkler irrigation system which are uh, there are many many different uh, modes of sprinkler irrigation uh, method which is being uh, used all over the world but there are some some methods which have become more popular so we'll try to look at those methods first what are the various types of sprinkler systems out of the the various types existing which are very common There are some systems, conventional systems, which are moved with the, the manual labor. Let me first uh, put all those which we are going to have a look at. Hand move, solid set, side roll. then center pivot then you have big gun these variations they have come about with respect to the requirements in terms of in some cases with, the, with respect to the requirements of labor in some cases you will find that the labor uh, requirement is very low so let's have a look at uh, these um, different types one by one the hand move is the one which we had uh, discussed <coughs> during our the period when we were discussing the various methods of irrigation where we had said that there is a a main line and that my line will have uh, different laterals if we say that this is the main line now these laterals are moved from one position on the lateral to another position using the manual labor you might again the this hand move system you can also call this as a portable portable system the level of portability again can vary in some cases it can be it can be completely portable in terms of you might be replacing the main line also and moving it from one place uh, one place to another uh, the next place but that normally happens when you have uh, availability of water along a channel whereas in some other cases it might be called semi semi portable right now what we are referring to is a semi portable system where you are only removing the laterals the main line remains fixed you might move the laterals from one position to another position so that the level of portability can be uh, varying from situation to situation there's no such rule the extent of portability can vary so the other the, the other extreme can be the solid set 
and this in the case of the solid set system you might be keeping everything fixed the laterals as well as the main lines they might be remaining fixed if not uh, permanently at least for the the duration of the crop so if you keep the the lateral uh, fixed for the duration of the crop which in in turn what it will mean it will mean that you will have to have those number of laterals which you are going to use in any position so the number of laterals requirement will be very high in that situation where you are not willing to remove the laterals you might not be running all the laterals at the same time you might be running only uh, one segment at a time because these things are again will come to those uh, details when we'll discuss that how many laterals you can run at a particular time because all these things are dependent on what is the source of water supply what is the quantity of water which is available and uh, the relevant pressure so in in other words what is the pump which you are uh, using or the size of the pump and that will decide how much how many laterals can be used in one set or at a at a particular time that in turn also is dependent on what is the pressure requirement in each each lateral because that is what is going to decide the distribution pattern of the the wetted area or that sprinkler head so in the case of solid set system you will uh, um, keep the laterals permanently fixed if your labor is uh, very expensive you might decide to do that but that will be at the cost of more investment in terms of having more number of laterals then the the side roll system and the case of side roll system this is to avoid the the use of labor if the labor is very expensive you might want to have a trade off between the situation that in one case in one extreme you have the solid set system where you need no number of uh, laterals uh, which have to be bought and fixed permanently in position or at least for the the time for the duration of the crop the other extreme is that every time you remove the lateral from its position on the main line and then move the lateral to the the next position after physically dismantling it which requires a very regular labor so to avoid the avoid that situation and still reduce the number of laterals a system was evolved where you can have a lateral mounted on some aluminum wheels and that you can roll for example you might be having uh, a lateral might have this lateral and this lateral is mounted on uh, some wheels this mounting now you can roll the whole thing and uh, this itself is a lateral that means there might be uh, there will be a, a nozzle a sprinkler nozzle mounted on this now you might feel that in in some cases if the, the sprinkler uh, is uh, the nozzle is mounted on this since the whole thing is rolling it might change the direction of the the sprinkler head so to avoid that there was a there's a mechanism by which you can uh, avoid that by having a 
the sum mechanism by which you have a counterweight which is put so that to keep the, the sprinkler head always when there's a, there's a weight which is put which is uh, quite heavy so because of that weight the position of the, lip, the, the sprinkler head will always be in the same position in which you want it that means the erect position the vertical position so those things are taken care of by having uh, a specialized uh, those uh, sprinkler heads which can be mounted on these laterals but the advantage of this is that once you have done the irrigation or uh, once you have applied the water by keeping this in one position you can roll it to the next and that rolling also can be done um, through a, a motor it can be some equipment which can uh, have some driving force so that uh, driving can also be, the, the equipment can also be uh, having that mechanism which can uh, give you the, the driving force also or you can, you can move it manually, it depends on what is the size of the whole, uh, the whole uh, set. That is what we call the side roll system which is quite uh, uh, reasonably useful in some situations but is used only in those situations where you cannot afford to employ the labor whereas in our, condi uh, our conditions in our country the labor is not that big a problem so you might not need such a system. Then the center pivot center pivot system is another system which requires very less amount of labor. First of all, what the system, what is the philosophy of this system? In this particular system, the source of water is at a central point and then from this source you are having a pivot arm, one pivot arm which is quite a, uh, a long arm on which you mount the later. So this pivot can be, I can show you a, a figure of what the spirit um, can be. Is this clear, this figure? Now this is the pivot arm. And this pivot arm is having at different uh, locations these sprinkler nozzles are attached at different locations all along the pivot arm and this pivot arm if you can uh, notice here this is mounted on these wheels so the whole arm can move in one direction it can move about this pivot point which is the central point which is a source so this can move in the in the circular direction That means if you look at the total and this since is mounted on uh, um, the different uh, the mountings are available and this, this is mounted all along on these tripods which are in turn which are mounted on the, the wheels, so you can give it a, a rotation. That means overall as this moves in this direction, as this moves in this direction, each individual you will be having uh, at each location, uh, the, the, the location of this uh, sprinkler head 
either it can be up here or it can be down there that varies so in either case as you have seen in the figure you have these uh, sprinkler heads somewhere mounted here at these locations in either direction so when you are operating these each one is is wetting an area which has its own area of influence so at a at a particular time you are wetting up a strip and as it moves in this circular direction at each individual uh, time you will find that ultimately you are wetting a circular area which which is being wetted by the single lateral now this pivot as it can be very uh, depends how big the pipe you are you have installed what the pressures under which is operating but is a real big area the extent can be in hundreds of meters so ultimately you will find that you have through a, a central pivot system the source was at the central point and this source can either been, be in the form of a well or it can be in the form of a buried uh, main line which has been tapped here and you will be you will be getting an area covered which is a circular area now the disadvantage of this central pivot system is that you are you are wasting a lot of area which is a corner area if i if i have covered this area with the central pivot system which is the extent of the the pivot so ultimately i have covered this area and normally whenever you go in for the the agricultural operations you won't have the circular areas covered and this is a very big area so it will be covering many many fields all along but still it will be much more advantages if you can if you can have some way of covering these corner portions which are not being covered in this uh, in this system so you are wasting um, this area is not getting any water to avoid this problem the central pivot pivot system the movement of the central pivot system is varied and is called a linear move system is the same as central pivot but instead of uh, getting rotated you are you are moving this pivot along some channel or some supply source which is a linear supply source only then it can uh, uh, it can be taken care of so in under those conditions where you can have a linear movement of this pivot you can avoid uh, getting this these corner areas uh when uh, served you can you can you can uh, you can serve these areas you can avoid the situation where where you are uh, having these corner areas are not served uh, by the application uh, of irrigation water so that is what is is only the operation of the pivot system or of the the similar uh, uh, pivot which can be moved in a linear manner and you can you can take care of rectangular areas which are more useful than the circular areas then the big gun Now this system is having a philosophy that uh, you are having a a big nozzle which is operating under much higher pressures. So what you are doing is that instead of uh, 
using many number of sprinkler heads, you are using a sing single nozzle which is having a very distance, uh, very, very large distance coverage and through the use of that single nozzle, you are uh, uh, irrigating the areas. The only disadvantage is that the pressures which are required, they are very, very uh, high pressures and the distribution is also not very uniform under the, in the case of big gun system. But in some situations, the big gun system can be useful where uh, you are not very much bothered about the uniformity, the, the type of uh, crops are not very sensitive crops and uh, you have the prevailing pressures which are required. Now, having discussed the different types of irrigation systems under the sprinkler irrigation system which are available. We will go on to the other uh, related aspects of the system, but most of the times uh, we will be discussing the, the conventional sprinkler irrigation systems where we have a, a main line and the laterals either they are uh, the, um, flexible or the <laughs> the laterals which are uh, having portability or they are the fixed laterals that, that is only the method of uh, uh, application. Basically, it does not make any difference as far as the design is concerned. In the case of design, you have to decide on what are the pressures, what are the sizes, what are the spacings, those things will come. But we are not uh, going to cover the, the designs of uh, big gun or uh, of uh, the central pivot systems, they are beyond the scope of our coverage here. We are just, uh, in, in many cases the designs are not much different, they are similar because the, the basis behind those designs is the same, it is not very much uh, different, only thing is that you will have to take in, into consideration their uh, overlaps, how those overlaps have to be considered will be the, the difference in the overlap when you have a pivot system or when you have a linear system or the, the conventional system. So let us go on to the, the system components. What are the basic system components which have to be um, to be taken care of? The first thing is that in all these systems, this is true for uh, all the systems which we have just mentioned, that you need pressurized water source. That is a must. The extent of this pressure might be different from one system to another system. Just for example, uh, the, the system which we have just mentioned, uh, for example, in the case of big gun, the prevailing pressures might vary between uh, 830 kilopascal to 1035 kilopascal. And the, the impact sprinklers These impact sprinklers are the, the conventional systems where we have uh, the sprinkler heads mounted on the, the laterals and the laterals are getting water from the, the main line. In those systems, the pressures 
may vary between these limits and the the red systems are the systems which need comparatively lower pressures. So these are the pressure ranges. Now you can see here that uh, the pressure requirement of the big gun is almost four times that of the impact sprinkler. This is conventionally used for the, the, the uh, areas which are the reasonably uh, the reasonable uh, areas which you normally handle. Whereas in the case of pivot system, the areas which you handle, they are very large areas, and that is possible only in the case of uh, co uh, cooperative farming or where you have very big farms which are under the same uh, uh, farmer or uh, under uh, you, you might have a cooperative. So only in those situations you will find that the pivot systems are of much use and you have for uh, many, many hectares you have the same crop. Whereas in our conventional systems as we know that in most of our uh, projects the availability of the crops is very high. You might have uh, very small size fields which are having the same crop and for each individual field you will have to have the sprinkler system if you are using one and the impact, impact sprinklers will be the one which will be quite useful in our situations. Then besides the the pressurized water source, you will need a main line. The main line is main line is the connection between the the pressurized source of water and the point of delivery. And this main line might not be required for some systems. <coughs> for example, when we have uh, discussed the, the uh, pivot system, in that case, the main line is not required. Directly, you are having the connection between the source and uh, the lateral. The main line is not available in those systems, but in most of the systems, <coughs> you will find that the main line is uh, a very important component of the system. Then, besides the main line, you have lateral line the lateral line is the line which comes off the comes off of the the main line and it delivers the water to to the individual sprinkler. system. Let's say that this is the source. 
posições de frontal. Vou esperar em clarear. Só diz a verdade. The sprinkler nozzles. <coughs> then the other system components which are related are that you will like to know what is the lateral spacing and at what spacing you have to provide these sprinkler nozzles on a particular lateral. all this as SL and what is the spacing between the two lateral positions on the main line. So, this is known as main line spacing. Normally designated by SM. Then, besides this, we'll also be interested in what is the wetted diameter. So, if you look at the area of influence of this individual sprinkler nozzle. Now this is this is the wetted area. spray pattern and this area this nozzle or the spray, spray pattern of this nozzle that is designated by a parameter which is known as wetted diameter and designated by DW. These are some of the main uh, quantities or some of the main uh, items which we will be referring to quite often. These are the, the design parameters you can say which will be very important from the consideration of our uh, objectives of the design and it is very essential to, uh, to know these parameters what these parameters mean. So, let us now look at what are our design objectives. By now, we know that uh, the, the generic design objectives which we have, which are true for all the irrigation methods, irrespective of which method you use. And these the design objectives are that we have to take care of the water requirements, we have to avoid the, the losses, so as to keep those losses as the minimum ones. They are the same, uh, they are not going to very much from one method to another method, 
But let us have a re-look into those design objectives. The required depth of application This required depth of application has to be satisfied as a prime design objective because you want the, the crop to grow well without, without uh, uh, stresses which it cannot sustain. Those stresses, we have to avoid that those stresses should be uh, allowed to develop in the crop. So, for that purpose we have to ensure that the required depth of application has to be provided to the, the soil at the time whenever it is needed. And this we know that this required depth of application is dependent on many factors, is dependent on the peak period evapotranspiration rate, which is a function of the climate. So, you have to, it will be a function of what is the peak evapotranspiration rate during that period, which is under concentration and that will decide what is the required depth of application. It will also be dependent on what is the water holding capacity. the soil, the root zone depth, as the, these two put together, the extent of the soil profile which is providing moisture to the crop and the water holding capacity, these two put together will decide what is the available moisture. And the management allowed depletion. Now, these are the major factors which will decide because when at what exact time you want to irrigate that, that there is some level of flexibility in that and that is a function of uh, uh, a decision made either by the farmer or the management. So, that is what we we have discussed earlier that the management allowed depletion or uh, uh, the deficit can also influence how much is the requirement at that particular time. Then the other design objective is, which is true for this particular case. In the previous uh, methods which we have considered so far, this objective was not the one which is uh, which we are going to discuss right now. This is a very particular objective which is only uh, true for the case of sprinkler irrigation system, and that is that the integrate the integrate of soil. Should not exceed. So, as to avoid any runoff from the irrigation uh, uh, irrigated field. So, in this particular method, we do not allow any runoff to generate, which means we will have to control the irrigation application to the extent that the, there should not be any surface runoff uh, which which might crop up, which means that you will have to you will have to take into consideration what are the variations in the intake rates, because intake rate is something which is dependent on the soil moisture conditions, it is not fixed, it varies with respect to the soil moisture, moisture condition. So, when we are designing the, the sprinkler irrigation, we will have to consider what is the the prevailing 
integrate of the soil under those conditions and control the irrigation application in such a manner that you don't get any surface runoff. Then we also want the uniformity of application. So, which is an objective which is common objective that was the objective earlier also and this uniformity of application will result in reduction in the deep population. So, if your deep population losses are large, the uniformity will be, the uniformity of uh, application will be low. We have to design the system in such a manner that the uniformity of application can be uh, as much as possible under the prevailing conditions. Now, the uniformity of application At this stage, we can just uh, at least mention that in the, in the case of sprinkler irrigation system, you are getting a depth of application by the overlap of different, different uh, uh, application patterns which are for individual sprinkler heads. So, there will be some level of inaccuracies involved or some level of uh, non-uniformities which will be involved because of these overlaps and that will be, that will be dependent on many other factors. For example, the wind conditions which is going to be a major factor in deciding how well you can have the overlap, how effective overlap can be uh, obtained under those prevailing wind conditions will be a function of the level of wind conditions. If the wind conditions are very excessive, the, the wind speeds are very excessive, you might find that the overlaps might be very difficult to, uh, uh, to obtain the uniformity throughout the area. We will discuss those things in details. I thought I will just uh, mention, make a mention at this stage. This is one of the, the condition which will uh, decide how much will be the uniformity which can be achieved. Then in uh, this system, another design objective which is very often can be a deciding factor is the trade off between the achieving the physical uh, conditions the physical requirements of the crop and in achieving those requirements, how much you have to incur, uh, how much expensive the system can be or how much expense you have to incur. So, the economy of uh, the overall uh, uh, system is going to be a very major factor in this. Trade-off between physical plus biological requirements and on the other hand the economic cost of equipment plus labor. And these two factors are going to be the deciding ones. In some cases, if you change the design, you might find that your initial cost goes up very much. You might have to invest a lot of money in, in providing all those equipment 
example, if you go in for the, the permanent set system, it's going to be the fixed system, you will require a lot of pipes which will, which will add to your initial uh, investment. Whereas if you go in for a flexible system, your labor costs will be uh, quite excessive. Similarly, the costs like maintenance costs, the recurring costs, all those things you will have to see and compare them under different options. But at the same time, you will also have to look at how well you are, when by choosing a particular system, how well you are in a position to cater to the requirements, which is the basic need of the education system. So this trade-off is a very important aspect and is a very subjective thing. This trade-off will vary from place to place in those conditions or in those countries where the equipment is very expensive. People might go in for uh, the labor is cheap. You might choose a different option than in those places where uh, is the other way around. So uh, is is totally is a very subjective uh, objective. The design objective will vary from place to place. is very essential to understand that, but it can be a deciding factor that in many situations. Then. Let's go on to the some other aspects which are uh, uh, which we must understand before we go on to the next level of looking into the designs of these systems as the uniformity of application. We just mentioned and our objectives that we need to get uniformity of application. Now that uniformity of application is dependent on two basic factors. One is the, the pressure, the prevailing pressure, and the other is the wind conditions. How the pressure influences the uniformity of application? Let's take three different cases. When we operate the sprinkler nozzle under three different pressures, now this is my location of the sprinkler nozzle. Let us say that this is the distance, this is the zero level, this is 10, 20, 30 meters. So this is the central point where the, the sprinkler nozzle is nozzle is fixed. Now, if the pressure is too low, we won't give the order of magnitude, we are just saying relatively, because that will be the, the this variation of the distribution of water will vary with respect to the size of the nozzle and the pressure. So, we are just trying to look at how relatively this pressure distribution will change, the pressure variation will change the, the distribution pattern. When the pressure is low, you might find that you might get a, a distribution of water which is 
something of this. This nature, because in this case what is happening is that since the pressure is low, when the, the jet comes out of the nozzle, it's not broken up into smaller particles, it's not fully broken up, it's not broken up to the extent that it can uh, get distributed over this area of influence in a uniform manner. It might be having some, still some streams which are going as a stream of water. There is some breakage of jet, but not as only partial breakage. So, if that happens, you will find that this type of variation will be observed. On the other hand, if the pressure is too high, you might get a variation which is something of this nature. And the pressure variation, the, the variation of the distribution might be something like a, a triangular variation if the pressure is satisfactory. Now, why we are saying that this is this variation, this uh, distribution is more acceptable because ultimately we have to get the, the overall distribution by overlapping these individual uh, distribution patterns. And it is very difficult to get a uniform distribution, the overall uniform distribution by having either of these two distribution patterns. That is the reason, otherwise there is no other reason. That is the only reason that why we want a distribution pattern of this type. Why we are calling this pressure to be satisfactory because by having this type of pressure distribution is much easier to have a better uniformity uh, of application. Okay. Any question? So, stop here.